Hey guys, this is Austin. Is a tiny gaming PC worth it? So this is the Alienware Alpha R2. And if you remember, the original Alpha was actually one of the first Steam machines. Oh wow, okay. So first off, we actually have an Alienware keyboard. I mean, this stuff is fairly basic. You'll probably want to upgrade to something a little bit more high-end, but it's definitely nice that it's included. We've also got the 180-watt external power supply. This is a little bit unusual on a desktop. However, considering how small this is, it actually makes sense. This, uh, this is tiny. Around back, you'll find quite a few ports, including both HDMI in and out, so you could theoretically set this up as part of a home theater setup. But more interestingly is the external PCI slot. So this is what you can use with the Alienware graphics amplifier, which is essentially an external box that you could put an even more powerful graphics card in. Also, if you flip this over, what you'll find beneath this little cover is a USB port. So it might seem weird to have a hidden USB port. However, this actually makes a lot of sense if you have, say, like a wireless mouse or keyboard and you want to hide the dongle. It goes underneath here, slide the cover on, it's totally hidden. One of the advantages of having a computer that's so small is that you can actually be portable with it. So they sell a specific bag that is made for the Alpha. So not only do you have enough room for the Alpha itself, but you could also fit a couple controllers, maybe a mouse, you can also fit the power adapter. And when you're ready, just zip it up, and you've got yourself a nice portable little travel bag. This is really where the Alpha R2 makes sense. While well, you could always go for a gaming laptop, they're quite a bit more expensive, where this is more of a proper desktop. With an HDMI 2.0 port, you can hook it up to a 4K display or TV, and you've got a PC that's way more powerful than a console. Speaking of, you've got a fairly clean install of Windows 10, but the biggest addition is Alienware's Hive UI launcher. The idea is that this is an interface that's meant to be used with a controller to launch games and do some basic tasks, but honestly, it feels a bit half-baked. I prefer to use Steam Big Picture mode and keep a wireless keyboard around for using Windows. The Alienware Command Center software can be useful to handle the HDMI input, along with customizing the LED lighting that lives around front of the computer. The model I have to test has an i7 and GTX 960, which is powerful enough to handle basically any game out today. The base model has a Core i3, 8GB of RAM, and an AMD R9470X, but I'd recommend upgrading to the model with the Core i5 and GTX 960. You're also dealing with a 1TB hard drive across the board. You can upgrade this from Dell's site, but it's easy to remove the four screws on the bottom of the Alpha and install your your own SSD for less than $100. Lighter titles like Rocket League are absolutely no problem to run a max at 1080p. You won't notice a huge difference in graphics compared to consoles, but Rocket League is hardly the most demanding title. Step it up to The Witcher 3, and the Alpha R2 is able to run at high settings at 1080. While the 960 is a solid card, pushing things to 1440p is a bit much. Shadow of Mordor is a great example of this. It runs really well at 1080p Ultra, and has the added benefit of being able to control the lights in the Alpha to match what's going on in the game. It's also seriously fun as you might be able to tell. The Alpha R2 is an interesting PC. It's a bit expensive, but the mid-spec model with an i5 and 960 isn't too bad. You'll want to add an SSD, but you're really paying for portability. It will be really difficult to build a system this small yourself. So what do you guys think about the Alpha R2? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.